Hey everybody, welcome back to another video in my journey to six figures with my Etsy store. Today I'm talking all about the strategies that I have researched and come across and looked up everywhere that I possibly could for best practices. And I am sharing with you what I am doing. So with that being said, let's do this. All right, so I'm gonna just jump right in. My goal with these videos is to keep them as short as I possibly can while giving you all the information that I possibly can. So we're just gonna go ahead and dive right in. So the first thing I wanna talk about with strategy is uh, kind of the overall of everything that I'm doing or have done to get me to this point so far. Right now it is March 27th, 2024. I opened my Etsy shop again, uh, I think, March 4th, March 3rd, something like that. And so um, I'm less than a month in, but these are all the things that I've implemented over the last few weeks. So here we go. Number one, I am not promoting my YouTube channel, my Etsy store, or my spoon flower shop on social media outside of this YouTube channel. Um, so no Facebook, no Instagram, no TikTok, um, no X. Um, I've got my list over here, so sorry about that, uh, looking over this way. Um, with one exception, I have pinned a few of my items on Pinterest. And the reason is because I don't use Pinterest professionally, even though I have a professional account. Um, and so I thought, you know, it doesn't hurt to have some pins out there, but I haven't pinned everything. Uh, so number two... All right, so number two is using YouTube free videos to gather information to come up with strategy. So uh, I recorded a video last week um, about um, some of the people that I've been following on YouTube to try to gather information from. I believe I also mentioned something about that in my first video. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, but there's a lot of information out there from different people who are self-professed Etsy shop uh, gurus who have made over six figures in their Etsy stores of pure profit, which I will talk about at a later time. And then they show like the screenshot of the profit, but it's kind of weird, but we'll get into that a different time. Um, so I've taken all the information from watching various uh, creators videos to try to come up with a strategy that works for me. And so what I'll be uh, diving into a little bit deeper in my next video is the specific strategies that I'm using uh, for Etsy in particular, but these are kind of the overall strategies. Um, so with that being said, um, one of the things that I want to mention is that I am doing kind of a mixture of things to try to figure out what works best and what doesn't. Um, one of the things is to uh, have over a hundred listings uh, within your first month on Etsy. Now I already have over a hundred listings in my Etsy store. So um, I think I was at 50, I've added 50 more. So yeah. Um, and then um, with that, some people say that's a good thing. Some people say that's a bad thing, but within that I'm trying different strategies to see what works and what doesn't. Number three, combination of print on demand, digital items, and possibly some of my handmade goods. So um, I'm doing primarily print on demand. Um, I really would like to see my work on physical products. I like knowing that people are out there and they have a product that they've purchased one of my designs on and they are just showing it off to the world. Um, but with that being said, I've always been a digital content creator, whether I was a photographer or a blogger or whatever, an artist, um, I have always, always sold in some sort of digital capacity when I've had my Etsy store. Um, in times past, that was printable art. It was um, templates for photographers, um, digital calendars. Um, that sort of thing. And so I do have that sprinkled in there. I am adding some additional digital products, which I'll go into in another video. Um, but I did want to um, at least put that part of it because I know when I started this YouTube channel again to do my journey to six figures in my Etsy shop, it was specifically for print on demand. But I also don't feel like I need to limit myself to only print on demand. So I just wanted to put that out there. 
Um, and then my handmade goods, um, those are the things that I sell at my art markets. I did a video uh, yesterday about my art art markets, and um, so I may or I may or may not put those on my Etsy shop. We'll see. I don't need the inventory sitting in my garage in my storage bins for them all summer, so it might be nice to put them on Etsy and see how they do. So um, we'll see. I do have some more art markets coming up before I'm done for the spring slash summer season, so more on that later. Um, number four is the possibility of a newsletter. So I have had a newsletter for as long as I can remember. Um, I have been terrible about nurturing that newsletter uh, subscription list. Um, I have, I think like 140 subscribers. I've been debating whether or not I want to take that back up because it is a lot to do an Etsy store, come up with new designs and do a newsletter and YouTube videos and social media for my handmade, the handmade side of my business. So um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that yet, but it is a possibility. Uh, number five, paying for Etsy ads. I am paying for Etsy ads. Uh, I had it started at $5 a day. I upped it to $7 a day. I can't remember when, but it's been within the last two weeks. And um, I can't say that I've noticed a difference in how much traffic I'm bringing in through those Etsy ads. Um, they do not spend the full amount uh, every day. So even though it's up to $5 or up to $7, it's been a couple of dollars. Um, and I'm not really sure why that is because I'm not very knowledgeable about, about that aspect of it just yet, but I'm hoping to get there someday. So I'll check back with you on that. The next one, number six, is paying for Etsy offsite ads. Um, I hate the idea of paying 15% commission for offsite ads but I also know that it's a potential for revenue. And so I figure since I'm going all in on this, I should at least see what I can do with my Etsy offsite ads. Um, so far, I haven't really spent anything on that because nobody has purchased through a link and it hasn't really brought in a lot of traffic, but we'll go over that in a future video as well. Number seven, I am embracing AI. So let me give you a little background. This may be a little bit longer of a talk. Um, so my background is graphic design and then photography, not photography and graphic design. I started off as a graphic designer. I went to school for graphic design. Um, it's been something I've done professionally since 2008. Um, but I've been doing it since 2004 or 2005, I think 2005. And so um, long story short, I was really hesitant to do anything with AI. I only just recently downloaded ChatGPT and it's March of 24 and everybody's been on that bandwagon for a while. Um, and so with all that being said, all the services that I subscribe to and pay for are using AI. For example, Photoshop now has a generative AI. Illustrator has an AI. Canva has an AI. Kittle has an AI. Um, everything has built an AI now to help generate this digital content. And I was very opposed to it in the past because I felt like as an artist, people were, or the AI was basically stealing other, pre other people's work and creating derivatives of it. But I feel like if it was such a huge liability, these companies wouldn't be including it in the subscriptions that we pay for. Um, so with that being said, um, what I have been doing when I create these designs is not looking up any prompts because I don't want to come up with someone else's prompt and then end up uh, copying somebody else's work. So when it comes to AI, I've been coming up with my own prompts and kind of playing around and figuring out what works best in uh, certain programs. So for example, I think Photoshop's AI is awful. I have used it many, many, many times and I have never been impressed with it. Compared to Canva, compared to Kittle, compared to Midjourney. Um, so Canva has a pretty good AI, but compared to Kittle, their styles come out different no matter I can put the same prompt into both of them and one art style comes out one way one art style comes out the other way and maybe that's a whole other video in and of itself but um what I've found the most consistent results with is using mid-journey which I know is a little more of a technical thing than using something like Kittle or Canva 
again, that's for another video. So I have been using AI to create my designs. Um, I have a ton of designs that I've created on my own that I have scanned into my computer over the years, made into high resolution files, put on um, Spoonflower and other print on demand products. So um, I do have a good mix of my own, but I'm also going to be having some um, really nice designs that I have gotten from Midjourney. So I'm very excited about that. Um, but I also think it's kind of the wave of the future and the longer you fight it, the harder it's going to be to finally integrate once it's in full swing. It's kind of like letting the cat out of the bag. So that's my take on AI for now. Um, next is Everbee. So everybody talks about doing your research with Everbee. So I signed up for Everbee so that I could do my research and figure out what's, uh, what's selling, what's not, keywords, tags, um, all that stuff. I really like their Etsy calculator though, so it can help me price my print on demand products. Um, but I do have some issues with it and I will tell you about that in another video, but I am using it. Um, then I signed up for Kittle but I'm not gonna stay with it. So I know a lot of the content creators are like, ooh, Kittle, Kittle, Kittle. Kittle is a very basic version of Photoshop and maybe a little mix of Illustrator. And so I'm finding for myself that while it does have utility for someone like me who has very advanced knowledge of graphic, excuse me, graphic design, <laughs> let me just burp in my video, um, I don't use it. And I find it more frustrating than not because I can't do the things that I want to do with it or I can't do them easily. So for example, like in Photoshop, I can open up a smart object, drop my file in there, save it, it goes back to the template and then it looks great. But I can't do that with Canva or Kittle because they don't work in smart objects. They work in layers, but they don't have clipping masks unless you use one of their pre-done masks, which is not always the shape that I'm going for. So that's again, probably a whole other video. Um, with that being said, though, I do have a Canva Pro membership that I've had for years. And the reason I really like Canva Pro is for things that I don't normally use on my computer with Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign. So, for example, if I want to easily create graphics to put up on uh, my thumbnails for Etsy, easy way to go about that is Canva. I don't have to take up space on my hard drive or my iCloud account. It just goes straight to my Canva account and I'm good. I also have access to all sorts of things from um, graphics like the little dollar signs that I put in the thumbnail of my last YouTube video um, or other designs that I've used um, in conjunction with things that I have created designs for um, and put on Etsy. Yes, I could watercolor a bunny to put on a baby's onesie, but if somebody's already done it and it looks good and my end goal isn't to be a painter selling that painting it doesn't it's not a good use of my time to spend trying to do all of that painting the bunny then scanning it into my computer then getting it perfected so that i can cut it out uh, off the watercolor paper digitally and stick it onto a onesie work smarter not harder um so anyway yes i have my canva pro membership i do like it I like also having access to the stock photos. It's also easy when I'm looking for a template to be able to drop my print on demand things on. Um, yeah, so, and, and being that Kittle and Canva are kind of one in the same in terms of like the services that they offer, I just think Canva is the better, a better pay. Um, I would rather pay for Canva Pro than pay for Kittle. So that's just my two cents. Um, next is looking into affiliate programs. Um, for services that I use to help leverage some extra income. I'm not sure how to leverage social media for that. So in the past, I've tried um, monetizing my Instagram and my TikTok videos. And um, I used to have monetized YouTube videos, but they have changed the framework of all of that. So I don't have monetized YouTube videos yet. Um, I hope to someday though, because I really hope that these videos not only help you, but my time and expertise that I'm gaining through this, I can be compensated for through 
ads in videos. And I don't think of that as a bad thing. So um, just something to think about there. Um, so I do have some affiliate programs that are on my blog. For example, I have a creative market affiliate program. So there's like a thumbnail on the sidebar of my blog. So somebody could click on, click on that link. If they buy something through creative market, then I get a small percentage of that purchase. And I kind of just think of that as like, a tip jar. So it used to be people would like refuse to click on affiliate links because they don't want to like, you know, they know you're making money off of their click and for whatever reason, that's a bad thing. But in my opinion, I think of it as this is my time. This is my experience. This is my expertise. If I'm 